Hello, I'm Jamie Dornan and I'm going to be reading a book for Save With Stories. Um, I'm going to be reading Bears Don't Read by Emma Chisister Clark. So here we go. This book belongs to George, does it? Pretty sure I thought it was my book. Okay, here we go. Most days, George sat on a bench at the edge of the woods and stared out at the distant hills. He wondered about life. Oh, life is lovely, he thought, tra-la-la and all that, but is this it, he wondered, is this all there is? His brothers and sisters never worried about anything. They were perfectly happy chatting, fishing, doing the usual bear things, and telling the same old stories over and over again. But George was bored. He didn't want to do the usual bear things anymore, he wanted other things, but what, he wondered. Then one day, as George was strolling through the forest, he found a book lying beneath a tree. Somebody must have lost it, he thought. How interesting. Inside, there were pictures of a bear, just like him. On the other pages, there were lots and lots of words. Each one, even the tiny ones, is saying something, he thought. If only I knew what it was. And this bear is having an exciting life. Not like mine, George sighed. But then he had a brilliant idea. He rushed home to tell the others. I'm going to town to find the owner of this book and ask them to teach me to read, he said. You don't want to go there, said his brother. They don't like bears in town. But I want to learn to read, said George. That's just silly, said his sister. Bears don't read. Why can't you be happy doing normal bear things? But George would not be put off. He waved goodbye and headed towards the long road into town with the book under his arm. George walked for a whole day and a whole night stopping to rest on a grassy hill under the sparkling sky. Before he slept, he opened the book again and gazed at the words. Already, he thought that the world was a more interesting place. The next morning, George rose with the sun, and by midday, he could see the town in the distance. He smiled. It looked lovely. There must be so many who know how to read there, and lots of new stories they can tell me. Uh -oh. But when he arrived, everyone was running. Some were even screaming. Wait, cried George. He showed the book to a woman rushing by. Do you know who this is? He asked. It's from the school, shrieked the woman and pointed to the red building. Bear, somebody shouted. Call the police. How peculiar, thought George as he walked towards the school. Inside the school, there was complete silence. Where was everybody? George peered over the desk. Hello, he said. But there wasn't anybody there. Suddenly, there was a shout. Freeze! Hands above your head. George was surrounded by policemen. What's the matter? He asked nervously. You're a gigantic, great, grizzly bear, shouted the chief of police. That's the matter. They moved towards him, holding up their shields. I don't want any trouble, said the chief. George didn't want any trouble either. It wasn't his fault he was a gigantic, great, grizzly bear. He held the book tightly in his paw. Just then, the doors burst open and in walked a little girl called Clementine with her mother. Hey, cried Clementine, that's my book, and that's the bear in my book. This is a dangerous animal, roared the chief. Stand back. He doesn't look dangerous to me, said Clementine. No, said George, I'm not that sort of bear at all. I was just hoping someone could teach me to read. Silence, roared the chief. But Clementine wasn't listening. I'm learning to read, she said. We could learn together, couldn't we, Mum? Clementine's mother looked at George. She could see that he was a perfectly nice sort of bear. I don't see why not, she said. So you'll take responsibility for this bear, will you, madam? Asked the chief. Certainly, said Clementine's mother. And there's no need to shout. She held out her hand to George. Very pleased to meet you, she said. Delighted to meet you too, said George. George moved into the summer house at the end of Clementine's garden. And each day after school, Clementine showed him everything she'd learned. It wasn't long before George knew all the letters of the alphabet. George didn't find reading easy at first. Even though he tried hard, he often made mistakes. But luckily, Clementine was a kind and patient teacher. Sometimes the chief came to see how they were getting on. He brought a book of his favourite poetry to read aloud to George. My love is like a red, red rose. Then one day, Clementine said, I bet you can read this whole book now, all by yourself. George opened it and began. Once upon a time, there was a large brown bear who found a book lying under a tree. 
He read the whole book all the way to the end. Bravo, said Clementine. We knew you could do it. And as for George, that was just the beginning. So there we go. Um, that was a real treat to be able to read that story. I haven't read it before. Uh, if I don't have to give this book back, I'll be keeping it and reading it to my kids uh, tonight. Um, so guys, uh, please uh, donate underneath this um, video. There'll be somewhere where you can donate um, with Save with Stories. Um, that money will go to Save the Children who are helping families uh, who are hit most by the coronavirus um, pandemic. So um, please be thoughtful to those people and give generously. And um, thank you for listening.